Hey guys, Mr. Allison here for some more readings from Crash. We are on chapter 23, and if you remember from last time, uh, Crash is at a dance. He's at a seventh grade, I think it's all a middle school dance, um, because he, he at first was about to dance with a sixth grader, um, but he really wants to go up and talk to Jane Forbes. And, uh, well, as you find out, Crash isn't always, he doesn't always think through things. He's a bit uh, bullheaded, as we know from previous chapters. Um, so this is going to be a cringy chapter on Crash trying to talk to Jane Forbes at the dance. Uh, where we left off, he was heading across the, the floor and walking right to Jane Forbes. Chapter 23. On the football field, I don't run around people. I run through them. Life is football. For a couple of minutes there, I had forgotten. And then I remembered. I was the holder of the single-game touchdown record for Springfield Middle School. I was five foot seven and a half, 150 pounds, and I was wearing a 10-pizza shirt. I was Crash Coogan. No more messing around. No more cruising by with a dinky little wave and hoping that she would smile at me. I walked right up to her and all of those friends of hers. Like nothing was there but those big brown eyes of her getting bigger and bigger, like the eyes of a free safety just before I plow him under. Hi, Jane, I said. How you doing? I thought you might come to dance. Is that a new hairdo? One hand started up like it was about to go touch her hair, then stop. Her face didn't know what to do either. It was like, gah. She was totally off guard. The crasher was in charge, and the crasher loved it. Not really, she said at last. No, I said, rolling now, smiling, shedding tacklers. Well, it looks really different. Anyway, it looks really nice. She was ready to say thank you, but I just rolled on. Tell you one thing that is new, I patted my chest. This shirt... I got it at, at Jack's. Maybe you don't know because you're new here, but that's a men's store. I wear men's sizes. I gave her a wink. I guess you could hear. I guess you could wear women's sizes, huh? Those big brown eyes were looking up at me and at the crash man. Before she could grin and say, you better believe it, I went on. I hope you like all those touchdowns I'm scoring. Tell you what, next game, my first touchdown will be just for you, Okay. I was remembering how the big-time jocks in high school and college get all the girls they want, and I was thinking, hey, it's true. And I wanted to say, I really like how you hardly use any makeup, but I didn't know how to say it, at least with words. But my hand knew what to do, and my hand was reaching out to say it, just to touch that perfect, unmade-up face, the most beautiful face I ever saw. My fingertips ne never touched her cheek. She slapped them away. It didn't make any sense, so I ignored it. I smiled bigger than ever and took her hand and started towing her away. Hey, let's dance, okay? She jerked her hand out of mine, and for the second time in five minutes, I heard the word, no. I said, huh? She jabbed her hands onto her hips, and she glared. Who do you think you are? I grinned. I don't know if I got the words from a movie or what, but there they were. I'm the answer to your dreams, baby. Stone cold silence, frozen face. For the first time ever, she was looking at me, really looking, and then she laughed. Not giggled, laughed. Her friends laughed, and they kept on laughing. Jane, with her hand over her mouth, another had tears, another was doubled over. I knew they were laughing at me, but if they thought I cared, they didn't know me. Crash Coogan never got it. He never gives up. So... I just cracked up a chuckle of my own, reached out and took her hand again, and headed back out to the dance floor. Now, just to pause here, he obviously should have listened to her the first time, right? This time, she tried to yank herself free, but she couldn't. The grip of iron had her, and then she kicked me right above my heel and my Achilles tendon. My leg buckled, and I let go of her. I turned. I was about ready to stop being nice. Hey, I said, what are you trying to do? You know what you just did? I didn't wait for an answer. You just kicked my Achilles tendon. Do you know that that's about the worst thing you can do to a running back? If you snap your Achilles, you're out for a year, minimum, maybe two years. And even after that, you might never be the same. I glared at her, letting it sink in. 
girls, even cheerleaders, don't know anything about football. They couldn't care less about what it takes to be a pro. She finally said something. You! Her lips curled, showing her teeth. Hey, don't do that, I warned her. It ruins your looks. Her lip went higher. If you ever touch me again, I'm going to scream and get you kicked out of school. You ever kick my Achilles again and you won't have a mouth to scream with, I told her. She looked like she was going to laugh again, but she just gave an unladylike snort and wagged her head. You are the biggest jerk I've ever met in my life. Thank you, I said pleasantly. She went rambling on. You think you're so great. I bowed. Thank you, but you're just pathetic. You have a big mouth. You bully people around and you don't care about anybody's feelings. You're just a big, dumb, obnoxious jock. I didn't really care about the words. What I cared about was that finally Jane Forbes was standing still and facing me and talking to me. I think I was about to reach out and take her hand for a third time, but then you know who shows up but Spider Web. Pretty cringy. Let's do chapter 24, <laughs> see if he can learn something. He was wearing his usual thrift shop rags, except for the shirt. It was a t-shirt that had been printed up to read, Stall the Mall. You believe it? And as usual, he didn't have a clue about what was going on. He just barged into with his own little universe. Old Perky. Greetings, fellow students. Hi, Pen, said Jane. I would have given my left nostril for a smile that she shot him. Did you get it? Webb held up a plastic bag. Yep. He took something from it, a t-shirt. He shook it open and displayed it. It said the same thing as his. Jane squealed and snatched it. And right there, she pulled it on over her other shirt, and she modeled it. Webb and her girlfriends clapped. That's really stupid, I said. What makes you think you can stop a mall with a couple of t-shirts? Not just a couple, said Webb. We're going to try and get everybody in school to wear one. Everybody in town. I laughed. You're crazier than I thought. If you think all those kids are going to wear that thing, whoever heard of trying to stop a mall? Anybody who doesn't want a mall is... I wasn't sure what the word meant, but Jane had used it on me earlier, and it felt right. Obnoxious. Well, he said, somebody in your own family is joining in. Abby has one. I poked him in his skinny, sunken chest. I kept poking him backward till he was against the wall. You let my family out of this. If I ever catch you doing this stuff around my house, I'll have your butt for breakfast. And stay away from my sister, you hear? She's little, and she doesn't know any better. I gave him a final poke. Understand? I had him nailed to the wall with one finger. Behind me, I could hear kids rushing over. Whispers of fight mixed with the music. I was waiting for an answer when Jane reached in and pulled my finger away. Anybody else, I would have clubbed them. Want a dance, Pen? She said, and she took his hand and pulled him away from the mob. Mike came over. He just stood there watching them dance. When the song was over, I said, Come on, let's get out of this dump. As we left, I made sure we passed Webb and Jane coming off the dance floor. I took a quick half step to the left, set my legs, and rammed into him with my shoulder. He went flying on his rear about ten feet across the floor. Oh, I said, like, really sorry, excuse me. And we were out of the door. I'll stop there. Um, sounds like uh, Crash is acting like a major, major jerk uh, to Penn and Jane Forbes. Uh, and he really doesn't know to ha how to handle uh, kind of what's happening right now. All right, until next time, we'll see you soon.